everybody. Happy Monday. It's Monday. I'm still not used to the Monday thing. So this is our last Monday <laughs> class. I'm finally starting to get used to it. But um, I anyway, I uh, I didn't think I was going to be here at all because the Internet wasn't working. So I finally got the Internet going and it is um, working much better now. So the uh, I'm going to have to go ask my dad to turn the TV down just a second. So I'll be right back. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Sorry, he turned a news channel on and it gets really loud. The The talking was really loud and then it, I lose my train of thought when I hear all that noise. So so how is everybody this evening? Sorry about that. So anyway, the, the, the internet is working now. I don't know what happens, but something goofy happens here that things just don't connect or something. I don't know. So anyway, hi, Shannon. So who else is here? Jackie, Deb, Kathy. Hi, everybody. So we're going to finish up um, Sweet Land of Liberty. I thought maybe I was going to have to just record it, you know, and, and then upload it when I could. It's just Mediacom. You know, Mediacom at my house, I never have any trouble. So rare. But here it's just been a nightmare because I think, for one thing, we're kind of on an end of a line here. And I live in an older neighborhood in town. And I think the internet and stuff was put in very long time ago. And there's a lot of um, old cabling and stuff. And I think they're just having, I think it's just a problem. And, you know, probably most people don't notice it if they're not home and they're not using the internet as much as I do. So anyway, I... We'll just we'll just plug on and pretty soon with hopefully yet in the next month or so, we're supposed to get new fiber optic internet here. And I signed up. <laughs> so hopefully we'll get new internet that's a little bit more reliable. And <laughs> I don't have to reset the router like or the modem and the router like six times before class every time. Because every week I have to. It I mean I try to get on and it won't won't let me on. And then I have to reset everything. So I reset it, I think, four times today, <laughs> just just right before class. So if I look a little frazzled and my hair is kind of sticking up funny, it's because I've been crawling around behind the TV doing the Internet. <laughs> so anyway, I think it's working now. So we'll go ahead and we'll sew because sewing is fun. Sewing is going to be really fun tonight. So we're going to work on assembling our... Um, our sweet land of liberty and i forgot to bring the pillow home i'm so sorry i had so much stuff to bring home because we taught an event on friday or saturday and i had you know to teach a lot yesterday too so i i didn't bring everything home with me <laughs> so i forgot to bring the pillow home so anyway yeah i i look probably a little frazzly too anyway i i mowed my lawn this afternoon and i haven't had time to take a shower yet so don't mind me <laughs> I mowed my lawn this afternoon. I went down to Iowa City and did that. It's been a busy day, so it's been kind of a busy weekend. So, hi. Somebody says, hi, I'm here. Oh, Margaret. Donna's here. Marianne. Okay. All right. So, let's go ahead and switch the camera over here. Let's see. I think I got everything ready where I need it to be. I got this going over here, so I think we're good. Okay. So let's go ahead and switch the camera and let's talk about assembling this. This is really easy to assemble. Um, this has been one of the easiest ones I thought to put together because there's not a ton of blocks and um, second, I need to get my microphone switched too. There we go. All right. All right. So I have my machine set up for sewing. I have my instructions here. Um, I am going to sew this together with kind of a gray um, Pima cotton thread. Give me just a second. Hi, Donna. Hi, Pat. Everybody's still saying hi. Hi, everybody. So this was really fun to do, and it, and it does go together really well. So now the one thing I want to tell you, um, 
as I'm sewing this together, I am going to use a full quarter inch seam. The reason being, if you have cut your borders to the size that they told you to, you're much more likely to have them fit properly if you take a full quarter inch seam. Don't, don't be scant like we often are when we piece quilt tops. Um, so I'm going to use a full quarter inch seam so that, at, and so even if you cut your borders to the, to the length, it's possible that they will all, they'll still be just a hair long and then you will have plenty. Okay. If you, if you are going to do, I, I did not cut mine, of course, so I'm going to trim mine as I go and I'll show you how I do that. I'm just going to measure my pillow and then I'll tell you how long I'm making mine because that's how mine's turning out. Um, but the way I, I've learned with these pillows that if I, if they, if people cut the borders, like when we did the event with the pillow and all of the borders in the kits and all of the flanges were cut to the right length. And I just, I, mine sewn together fine, but I always use a full quarter inch seam and it really did work fine. Okay. So we're just going to sew this together. This is really fun. There's only eight blocks to do. And so there's a couple of sections. Okay, and the other thing it says is press the op seams open from the back as you go. So I like to, when I press these, I always press my seams open to lay them flatter because there's a little, they're a little bulky, you know, they've got some batting in there and the stabilizer. So, okay, so let's, let's uh, see what the picture looks like. We're going to start with Sweet Land of Liberty. So here's our Sweet Land of Liberty block. And we're going to start with our little, um, our little piece block that we did last time. So one of the last time, actually not the last time, but time before. Okay. So I'm going to turn these right sides together. And I, I, I do like to pin these because these kind of scoot around a little bit because they're a little on the thick side. So I'm going to stick a couple pins in here and make sure I got it right. So the sweet goes up the left side here. Make sure I get it right. And the other one, it doesn't matter because it's the same on both sides. So because remember, we, we cut that block and then flipped it over. So it's the same either way. All right. So I'm going to go ahead. And again, I, I like for a quarter inch seam on my machine. So I'm going to go over here for a second. I like to go to my Q tab on my machine. And I like to use Q02. That is the piecing stitch. It moves the needle to the right. And then I'm going to run my fabric along the right hand side of my foot instead of having to use a piecing foot. I've just, I just don't like to have to change the feet. The other thing I have done is made the length just a little longer. This defaults at 2.0. I make a lot of mistakes, so I don't want to have to rip 2.0 stitches. So I am going, I moved mine to 2.5, which is a little bit more kind of a normal stitch. Okay. All right. So we're going to go back over here. hopefully. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a full quarter inch. So that means when I put my foot on this, the right hand side, okay, of my foot on the edge of my fabric, I want to just see the edge of my fabric. I want to just see it. Okay. And then I know it's going to be a full quarter inch because if you, if you push it under, it just under the foot, then you're, then you're at a scant. Okay. So I am going to want to see that. And I, so I want a full quarter inch. All right. Let's see how we did here. All right. Let's see here. That looks pretty good. Okay. So there's our first one. So this, you, you put the Sweet Land of Liberty with the piece block like that. And I used a full quarter inch seam. Then I'm going to put my pie block. So we need to have our pie block. And obviously I did a pretty good job trimming them because they're, they're turning out the right size, which is good, right? So we're going to go ahead and pin this one. Hold my camera back just a little bit so you can see better. And I'm going to pin this one. And then we're going to do a full quarter inch seam on this one as well. 
So I like to kind of pin, do my sections, and then I'm going to go press. Okay, so we'll do the sections. So again, I want to see that just the edge of the of the fabric, because then I know it's a full quarter inch. I'm just going to see it, and then I know that if and if you made your borders to the length that they, if you cut them to that length, it'll be fine. They will turn out, but you just need to take a full quarter inch. All right, so there's the pie. That's the next one. I think the watermelon goes at the bottom. Okay, so we're going to do the watermelon. Here's the watermelon. Okay, this one. Should we get it right side up? Goes this way. And we're going to... The only reason I am sewing over these pins and you noticed slowly is I am using these little tiny, tiny little magic pins. And so I have problems keeping things lined up if I, when I'm sewing like quilt tops together, if I, if I remove my pins, you can remove your pins. Of course, these are the only pins that I ever drive over because they're so thin. I just never worry about them. They're very, very soft. I would never do this with one of those yellow headed quilting pins ever because you will hit it and you will put, take the timing out on your machine. Okay. Again, this one, I'm, I just want to see just the edge of my, and this is uh, my Pima cotton. This is a gray and it's a nice, just, you know, um, it's a nice, um, neutral color that works good with all the colors. So I'm just doing a gray. Okay. All right. So there is our first section. It's just, it's sweet land of Liberty, the peace block, the pie and the watermelon. So I'm going to go now over to my ironing bar real quickly, and I'm just going to open up these seams and press them flat. Okay. So you want to have them open that way. They're going to be nice and flat when we go to put this together. Okay, so give me just a second. I'm going to go to the ironing board. Hopefully that cooperates with me tonight. I almost gave up on the internet, guys. I almost just said I was going to I was going to video, but I gave it one more try. All right. I think that looks pretty good. Now you do want to be kind of careful when you're pressing these. Do you keep all of the stitches at 2.5? Normally, yes. Normally I like 2.5. Um, I do occasionally make them longer if I'm doing certain things, Margaret, but when I'm piecing stuff like this together, I usually do 2.5. Yeah. Okay. So there's my open seams. I like to open them up flat like this. Oops. I got this one going the wrong direction, but I'll fix that in a minute. Okay. Like this. And then it's nice and flat. Okay. You do want to be careful pressing these because remember we have stuff on the other side, not as much stuff as some of the quilts have. This one, we got a little piece of leather. It's going to be fine if you press from the back, but you don't want to press directly on this leather. You don't want to melt it. Okay. And it's fine if you're pressing from this side. All right. So there's our first section. Wasn't that easy? Okay. So now let's look at the, what the book says to do for the second section. So the second section is going to be, we have to kind of do some of the bottom rows first. So we need to put the little cherries and the, and the little flower together and then sew that together onto the cake. So let's see. So here's our little flower and then here's the cherries. So we're going to do these two first and sew them so that they look like this. So these the side together. And we'll pin these. Boy, I've got one really crooked pin here, don't I? These bend really easy. So even just putting them into the fabric bends them. They're very soft. But I do like them. And then these these ends, if you if you happen to press, like touch them with an iron, they don't they don't melt, which is nice. So okay, so let's do this. Again, the same thing. I'm gonna do my full quarter inch seam. 
And if you do the same seam for the whole thing, everything's gonna fit nicely together if you were careful when you did your trimming. Now, the one thing I, I would say, if, if you don't have orange pop rulers, it is a little hi higher risk of things not fitting together. Um, the orange pop rulers really help with um, getting things the right size. So I really like um, like them, and I've done all these with the orange pop rulers. So things seem to fit together a little better. It's a little harder if you're trying to, to square up the blocks on your own because it's easier to get them a little off, like a little bit too big or a little bit too small. Okay. So then I'll, I'm going to press this in a minute. I, actually, I probably need, need to press it now because we're going to put, oh, we're going to put the cake on. So we're going to put the cake on first. Let me go press this one open. It was just easier for me to get up and iron <laughs> than it was for me to try to iron next to me because I had all these pieces. Okay, so we got these two. So let's see how we did here. It, these two should equal the cake, which is what we plan plan to do here. So we're gonna we're gonna sew the cake onto the side of these, and with any luck at all, it fits. So let's see how we did. I like to go down and do the other end first. And then I go back to the center. So now in th this case, I like to pin on either side of that seam that we opened up so that it doesn't flip over on me and then get all bulky. So I'm going to put a pin on either side of that. Okay, and then let's put one over here. Looks like we did pretty well. Looks like it fits together. And I've also noticed that with like with when I do the orange pop rulers, everything is a just a hair on the scant side also. So um, when you if you do if you do all the trimming with those, everything is gonna fit together real nice. All right, so I'm gonna get my full quarter inch seam here. Maybe. My foot controller was doing some kind of a weirdo thing last night. So let's see if it does it again tonight. I think it's just the foot controller. I've got a really old foot controller that I'm using. And I really like it, but I think I'm going to have to get a new one. <laughs> this one I've had, this is about the third sewing machine for this one. It's like the one for, that came with the Quattros, for those of you who had Quattros. And um, I've always liked that one. I never cared for the multi-purpose one because it was so big. I couldn't put my heel down on the, on the, on the floor. So I, I had a hard time controlling how fast I went. So this is the one that, that came with the Quattro that had like the retractable cord in it. And they do kind of go back bad every now and then because that retractable cord. Okay. Well, it looks like we did well because see, look, it came out even on the two ends. So that's the goal. So now I'm going to take this over and I'm going to press this seam over. This one here. Okay. So see, I did pretty well not getting that bulked up. I think I kept it pretty flat. It's okay to press on the back. There's a couple things on here, but it's okay on the back. So, you know, there's some leather on these. And it's okay if when you're pressing on the back because you're not pressing directly on it. Because there's a little piece of leather down here and there's a little piece of leather right here. Okay, so it's fine. So then there's my open seam. I think I kept this pretty flat, so it looks pretty good. I'll give it a little bit more of a press before we go to put the whole thing together. Okay. Then we have to put the flag on here. We got the front almost done. So we're going to put the flag across the top. So we'll see how we did here. You think we got it got it so that it's going to fit? With any luck at all, it'll fit. So I'm going to do this end, and then I like to go down to the other end. Make sure I got my flag right side up. I think I do. I'm going to go to this end. And then I'm going to go to the middle where that little, where the little seam was that we opened up. So I'm going to, I like to pin on both sides of that so that it keeps those little, you know, intersections flat. 
Okay, and then I'm going to go over here. I think, I think that'll be good. And then I'll do my full quarter inch. All right. Get the foot on there. And I like to drop my needles. So that's a good practice, sewing practice. Drop your needle into the very edge of the fabric before you start sewing. Okay. And you, did you hear me hit the pin? I, I didn't. Sometimes I take those bulky ones out, but I didn't get that one in time. But it's so, so soft. See what it did? So soft. Bent it good. That one goes into the trash now. You won't use that one again. Let's see how I can do with this one. These might be okay. Yep, they're okay. But I do not sew very fast over pins. But I find that everything scooches on me if I take them out when I'm sewing blocks together. So I'm just very careful and I don't go over them very fast. There we go. I think we're good with that. Okay. Let's see how we did with this one. Okay, and then I'm going to press this one open too. What do you think? Everything matched up nice, nice and flat. Hi, Clara. Okay, everything's nice and flat. So let me go get, I'm going to go open that, that seam up too, just a moment. My iron is deciding to spit at me tonight for some reason. I don't know why. Every now and then it likes to do that. Okay. Make sure I got these nice and flat. Okay. Looks pretty good. What do you think? There we go. So there's section number two. Okay. And then we're just going to sew section number one and section number two together. Now with this one, we are going to have only one little intersection right here. So I'm going to make sure I get them lined up. And then we want to make sure that that intersection looks beautiful. So I'm going to make sure that I get my seam lined up right there. Let's pull this back just a little bit. So I'm going to get that seam lined up nicely. And then I'm going to pin on both sides. So I'm going to do that first so that I know that I've got that lined up where I want it. So that it lines up pretty. That's the only one. And so sometimes it's easier when you don't open the seams. But the thing is, these are so bulky, it's really better to open them. And I'm going to I'm going to pin through these seams to hold them down so that they don't turn over on me the best I can here. Okay, let's see here. And then we're going to go up here to this side. Ooh, it looks like it's going to fit. Looks nice and flat. So maybe I'm doing okay here. I think I'm going to put one more pin in here. Oh my gosh, this is going to be so cute. I really love this pillow. It was a fun one to do. And then here's another one of those. Let's go down here and get the end first. And then we'll do these little intersections and pin those down so they won't flip over on us hopefully anyway sometimes they still do but i've just always pinned on both sides of them and just held them down but they don't all they still sometimes flip so is everybody getting their pillows done or are you sewing along with me tonight I'm always anxious to get one done. They're so fun to do. And this one didn't have so many like extra things on it. So you didn't have to do like a whole bunch of stuff at the end. It's just basically done when you're done. So I kind of like that. They, they put a lot of embellishments on. So, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and line this up, get my full quarter inch there. I am going to tie this one off, this big long seam. Okay. And I'm going to go very slowly over that pin. Okay, I can just see the edge of my fabric, so I've got my full quarter inch. Okay. 
I'm gonna go over those very slowly. There we go. Kept those nice and flat, hopefully. These are harder to sew together than some things. They're kind of bulky, so I don't sew these very fast. I like to sew slowly, especially if I've got pins. And, and I just can't keep anything straight if I unpin as I go, because then it scoots right over every time I take a pin out. And the same thing with the little clover clips. You know, I've tried those too. And as soon as you remove it, everything just slides. <laughs> So I've learned that I just leave the pins in very, in, but I only use these pins. These are those magic pins. They're extra fine patchwork pins. Okay. Doesn't look frozen on my end, Jan. I think I'm okay. Everything seems to be moving on both my sides. I've got, I'm in the, I'm in the live and I've got my, my other things. So I think everything seems to be fine. All right. So I'm going to take all these little pins out. And I'm going to fold this over. Oh my gosh, look at there. It's beautiful. So I'm going to go press that seam open along here, okay? Let me go get that done. And then we're ready to start doing the borders. I just saw a comment. I'll be right back. Just about done. This takes a minute to do this. Sorry, my. It's easier for me to. This is kind of big, so it's easier for me to do this on my ironing table over here. <laughs> All right. Just about done. Oops. Kind of made a mess of this one, but we'll get it flattened back out again. All right. Woo, it's hot. Okay, there we go. So there is our pillow top. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, cool. The sweet days of summer. Oh, Marianne. Oh, yeah. Isn't that cute? Isn't that pretty? I just thought this turned out, I just thought this was just, it was, it was just so, it was very simple and very, I thought it was just kind of simple and fun. So, okay. So we got our center of our, our pillow put together. Okay. Now the next section is going to be the borders, which is the red parts that we did the quilting on. And you do the side ones, the side panels first. So we're going to do the side ones first. Now, the way I do mine is I have mine separate, okay? I did mine, um, I had four, you know, I had fat quarters. So I, mine are kind of, you know, I did the whole, the whole width of the fat quarter. And these are going to be shorter. Um, I think they were um, 18, 16 and a half and 18 and a half. This is what you were supposed to cut them. So if you cut yours at that size, um, hopefully your measurement from here to here is going to be 16 and a half, right? Okay. So I got my tape measure out and I, this is how I normally do borders. Okay. And that's why I do mine differently than the book says, because I like to have, I like to measure my borders. So I'm going to measure this side and see mine are a little bit shorter. Mine are 16, mm, not quite 16 and about three eighths. So see, mine aren't quite 16 and a half, 16 and about three eighths. Okay. And then let's measure the other side and see if it's the same on the other side. And I'm not measuring right at the edge, although these, I think you could do that. And I think 16, see this one, is about 16 and a quarter. Let's measure this one again. Yeah. I think we could do 16 and a quarter and it would be fine. So see, mine are just a little short, okay? My sides are just a little teeny bit short of that 16 and a half. 
So by taking the full quarter inch seam, I think I can see you, then if you have the 16 and a half inch um, borders, your six, mine are 16 and a quarter. So we're good, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut my borders. I'm gonna go over here and trim these off. And I'm gonna trim those off at 16 and a quarter instead of 16 and a half. Those were what the shorter ones were. Okay, so I'm just going to measure it again. You know, you always want to measure. So this one's just a hair over 16 and a quarter. And this one is just a little right at 16 and a quarter. So the trick is you want to measure a couple places and you take that measurement. So I'm going to take the measurement of 16 and a quarter. Okay, so let me go grab. I'm going to grab two of my four borders and I'm going to type. I'm going to trim them down to 16 and a quarter. Okay, if you, you, you can do that, Jan, but you don't know that they're the same size and, and things are not going to be square. So I always cut them the same size. So I know that, that at least they started out the same length. Okay, so I'm going to do 16 and a quarter. All right, whoops, I got to turn it around here. 16 and a quarter. I needed my bigger mat tonight, so that's why I'm doing this over here. So 16 and a quarter. All right, got that one. Sixteen and a quarter. Oops. This one's a little wonky in the center here. Just a second. Sixteen and a quarter. Okay. So with any luck at all, they will fit. Yes. Um, I, but I still, they technically, they tell you, you should measure down through the center and, and met, take that measurement and do the sides. Otherwise things will be splayed, could be splayed. Okay. So that's why I'm doing it this way. Now I want you to be able to read my words like this. So I'm going to put this together like this. Okay. So we're doing the sides and I'm just going to, whoops here. Let's do, I, and I always pin the ends. Kids must be out playing around my house again because the alarm just went off on my door. And then I'm going to go down here to the other end and put the pin in the end. Okay. And then I'm going to kind of go like this and I'm going to pull it along the center. Hi, Cindy. Okay, so we'll do this one. We're gonna pin on both sides of that little, where that little intersection is right there, just to hold it down. And here. Okay. Oops, I think I'll put one more pin up here. All right, so we're gonna sew this one on and then I'm gonna go ahead and pin the other side on too, okay? So we can do that. Now I want this one also to be out. I want it to be up like this so that, you know, like it's, you can read it this way. So I'm going to pin this one this way. So we'll do this one on this end. So see if you had cut your, your borders to the length they said, it, yours may be a little shorter. So mine were just a little shorter. So, you know, they would they were fine. Okay. Well, this is the side that was just a little bit different size. So we might need to get set. So then what I do is I just give it just a little bit of a, a, I relax it just a little bit before I start pinning in the center. Okay, so there's that one. Let's get this little seam here pinned here. And then this one. Okay. 
right here. Okay, and then I think I can put one here, and I think it looks pretty good. I have to put two up here. This one's kind of a longer area. All right, so now we can sew both of these up. So this is our first set of borders. All right. So these I am going to also tie off, and I want to do a full quarter inch again. Okay, so I'm going to go in, and I'm going to just tie off. It looks like I'm going to go ahead of stitch here. There we go. I'm going to tie off at the end here. I'm just holding the tie off button, which is the round one. The, um, I like to just tie off in place. Okay, there we go. And I want to take a full quarter inch. So if you cut the other ones at, you know, at uh, 18 and a half, I think is what they were supposed to be, then you know that they're going to fit. And so my pillow, when I got my whole pillow done, it actually did measure a little short of the 22 and a half. So mine was like 22 or 22 and a quarter, as I remember. So we'll see how this one ends up. But it's still plenty, plenty good size for the pillow form. So no problem at all. All right, so we're going to sew down here, and then we're going to tie off at the end here. Just watch those pins. Tie off at the end here. Okay. Cut, and then we'll flip over, and we'll do the other side. So I've got the words going, the tops are this way, okay, on towards the outside. All right. I'm do the same thing. I'm going to tie off right here. I need to go ahead and stitch to do, I do it again. There we go. All right. I'm going to pull this pin out of my way. Come on. Come on. There we go. Take your full quarter inch. Let's see if these will lay flat enough for me. I'm going to have to take those out, I think. Sometimes I get to those big bulky spots and I still have to take them out, but pretty careful. There we go. That all lined up, and I'm taking my full quarter inch. So is everybody, anybody that's sewing, are your borders turning out okay? Did your borders turn out lengthwise okay? And your flanges, if you did your flanges already? I have a few people that have already finished their pillows. Okay, so I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to tie off again. All right, let's take these all out. Just gonna stick the oops, leave these there. I think that looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna press these open. And then we'll get work working on. Then we'll measure for the second set, the top and the bottom. Okay, it looks pretty good. I think they look like they're nice, nice length. So let me go press open the, the seams. And I like to open up all the seams. I think it might have said something about the borders doing like towards the outside or something, but I like to open them all so that they're nice and flat. Because otherwise, it's really hard when you're going to sew this together. And it's a little bulky, especially with the shape flex in there, too. All right, so I'm getting the second one. This one's being naughty to me. This one has more little junctions. Just a second. See if I can get it to lay flat for me. 
Yeah. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm going to flip this one over and iron it from the front so it's nice and flat when I go to measure. And when you're ironing from the front, be careful of those vinyls and stuff on here. Okay. There is the first set of orders. So these I've got the Sweet Land of Liberty facing this way. Okay. So we had quite a discussion when we were doing the last one how we wanted to do the bottom border. So there's a different, what kind of iron do you have? I have a um, Oliso iron. I just got a new Oliso finally. I've had an Oliso iron for years and I tried a couple of other ones, but I've gone back to an Oliso. Um, my favorite iron, and I will do that with this also. I like to get my, um, my Euro Steam Evolution iron out and really give it a good press, but the Oliso is enough for this one. So I may not have get it out tonight so we can finish this up, but okay. So now we need to put the bottom and the top border on. Let me find my, my uh, tape measure here. And let's see, I'm going to measure kind of in the middle, see where, what, what the measurement gives me here. And it gives me about 18 and a quarter. So see, remember they were supposed to be 18 and a half, right? So, you know, if you, if your borders were cut to size, you, you may be fine. 18, just shy of a quarter. It's been, it's pretty consistent. So it's just 18 and a quarter. So I think, I think we'll be able to do 18 and a quarter. Yep, it's close. So I think it, I think 18 and a quarter will be fine. Okay, so I'm going to go trim my other two borders, my other two red borders to 18 and a quarter. And I had these cut out of um, a back quarter. So, you know, they're, they're about 22 inches long, roughly, both of them. So 18 and a quarter. See how I can do here. I'm not the best cutter, so I, I really pay attention when I'm cutting. <laughs> I have a hard time cutting. Especially when I'm doing this kind of stuff, I don't want to have to do it over. <laughs> 18 and a quarter. There's my 18 and a quarter. Okay. So we had quite a talk about um, what model of Oliso. I have the, well, it's one of the newer ones. I just got it. So it's one of their new models. It's the, um, whatever, the, the 1600 blah, blah, blah. It's, it's the newest one. I think I got it from Joann's. They had them on sale finally. They, I tried to get an Eliso a while ago and they didn't have any. Okay, so this was the big <laughs> conversation we had. You can do this any way you want. My original pillow, I put this border that has the words on it upside down so that you all of the words, the tops of the words were around the outside edge. But then somebody said, well, can't we put it right side up so you can read it when you're setting? So... On this one, we'll put it right side up, okay? So I don't think it matters. So that this one would be, this one's gonna be right side up up here, you know, with the words up, okay? And I put the words out here, but on my original pillow, I put the words out on the bottom, so it is actually upside down. But when you move, when you turn the pillow around, all the words are going the same direction. But somebody said, well, why can't we put it this way? So I'm gonna put this one this way this time. Okay. So the, all the, so the words would be right side up when you're, when you're looking at it. Okay. So we'll do that this time. I don't think it really matters. And honestly, I can't remember what they did to theirs because I don't think the picture is very good. You can't see the picture down here because it's covered up with the flange. So I can't really see what they did to theirs. So 
Anyway, we're going to do it this way this time. So I'm going to put this one right side up at the top, flip it over here, and we'll pin it down. And, oops, sir, I'm going to pin right here first. I want those little, little seam allowances to stay open nice. So we get those done first. There we go. Okay. And then I'm going to go down to the other end here, and we'll pin this end. Here we go. Okay. And then we're going to go back to the center. So let's see here. Make sure it's good and relaxed. Oops. I don't think I have did a very good job of pressing on this one. I'm also not a very, very good at ironing. So I've always bought a good, I like the red border too. Um, I did it kind of with um, the fat, the thread is actually kind of a tan that I did the lettering in. All right, so I'm just going to make sure that looks like it's going to fit nicely. Put some pins in here and we'll do the other one too. So the other one, I am going to put it, you know, with the top up so that when you're looking at it, you'll read the letters. Okay, so I don't think it really matters which way you do it. All right, so we'll do this this one down here like this. So instead of doing it upside down, like so that all the tops are going the same way, I'm going to do it this way. Okay, so flip it over this way. So I don't think it matters. You can do what you can look at yours and decide how you want to do it. All right, so let's see if we can get this one lined up. Ouch, I just stabbed myself. These pins are wonderful. They are super sharp, though. So you will stab yourself. I bleed a lot when I use these. All right, so we're going to do this. And looks like I cut them well. So see, if you would have, if you cut your um, flanges and borders up to the size they said, yes, they're all available on YouTube. Yes. So there's a folder, there's a playlist on my YouTube channel, so along with Jan, called Sweet Land Delivery. So you can you can see all six videos in there. If you need to go back and watch all of them. Okay, so let me get this. So yeah, so I, I like to make playlists because then you can go find, like if you're looking for a particular project, then you can actually find it. So if you go to YouTube, so along with Jan, and then go to the tab that says playlists, um, then you can find all of the videos for that particular project together, okay? And there's some, you know, that don't have a playlist because it was just one, but um, most of them, you know, there's several videos for each project, so. All right, so I think we're good. All right, so let's sew these on. Again, I'm gonna use my full quarter inch seam I'm going to line it up, drop my needle, and I'm going to tie it off. Let's see how we do with these. These might be able to stay in. I'm very careful. Yep. I'm going to lay it nice and flat. Those are the ones I have the most trouble with is where, that's where my seam scooch is where those little intersections are. So you can tell I'm not sewing real fast. I sew actually pretty fast, and but when I when I put pins in, I don't. This one's gonna go over those carefully, and then we can go a little faster. Doing my full quarter inch. Let's pull these out a little bit. So like I said, my original pillow did turn out just a just a hair smaller than what what did they say you're working on the bench buddies yeah i love those bench buddies so we're to, we're gonna work on bench buddies um at, right after the fourth of july so the next week after fourth of july we'll finish we'll do the july ones and they're really summery looking so they can be left out you know they're not just fourth of july they're very summery looking so i figured we could do them after the fourth of july 
Fourth of July is kind of on a you know right on the weekend this year, so I figured everybody would be kind of busy doing things with their families and stuff, so we wouldn't have class this week, this next week. All right, so I got that tied off, and we're going to turn this over and do the other side. All right, we almost got the first ones on, then we'll put the second ones on. Flanges. So I'm going to tie these off. Yeah, I like the bench buddies. They've been really fun to do. And I, and I think I've decided what I'm going to do, actually, you know, after we get the bench buddies done in August... Somebody said, well, what can what, what are we going to do then? And I think what I'm going to do for So Along With Jan is I'm going to do some of the mug rugs. Because the mug rugs, um, I've always wanted to make them, and I've never made any of the mug rugs. And there's, especially the first couple of CDs were very seasonal. And I thought, well, those would be fun because then we could make one every month. So, and then I think there's 12 on each at least the first couple of CDs. I know the first one for sure. So we're going to start with the first one and make my grooks. And then, then we'll have a seasonal whole set. So that'll be fun. So we'll do that probably starting in October, actually. And then in, so July, we'll do the July Bench Buddies. And then we're going to have a scan and cut class. We'll do the Christmas in July card with the embossing. And then we're going to have a software class and it'll be a Christmas class. And so I'm getting down to the end. I'm gonna do my tie off. I think I need to back up a stitch. I'm just gonna, oops, gonna back up a stitch and tie it off again. Yeah, I think the mug rugs will be fun, don't you? I made all the volume five. Yeah, there's 12 in those. But I think I'm gonna go back and do the old ones, the old original ones, because I've always wanted to make those. And they really truly are seasonal. There's like, you know, one for every month. And um, I thought those would be fun to do. And then and then we'll do one one each month. Because I've been wanting to do them. And Lynn said, why don't you do the mug rugs? I'm like, hey, that'd be good. Because they're fun. And then I always have a class, one class every month already planned. I thought that would be fun. All right. So there's those. So this one, see, is also right side up. So this one. And you have volume three also. Yeah. So I think I'm going to do one volume one first. And then we'll go to some of the newer ones. Okay. So I'm going to go press these open. Give me a second here. And then we'll go on to the flanges. Press it open. If I get my iron to give me a little steam. Sometimes you got to give these Aliso irons a little encouragement to steam for you. I don't know why. I do like it though. I don't knock it off on the floor because it's on all fours. I've had one for years, but I for a while I my last one died on me and I couldn't get one. They they just didn't have them. So I tried some other irons and didn't like them. So just about done. Oops, kind of missed on this one. Ironing is not my easiest task. Between ironing and cutting, sometimes I have some choice words. <laughs> Not my easiest things to do. Okay. So there is our border. Yeah, I tried a Rowent. The problem is some of these irons, I'm so used to these Alisos. Um, they don't turn off for a half an hour. And, and a lot of, are you going to do the Halloween pillow? Yes, we are. So, Kathy, we're going to do the Halloween pillow. We're going to start it the last two weeks in August because we still have two bench buddies to do in August. So the first two weeks in August, we're going to do the bench buddies. And then the second two weeks of August and the first, well, the week after Labor Day and the following week, there's actually five Sundays in September. So we're going to do um, the Halloween pillow for the last two weeks in August. And then we're going to skip for Labor Day and then the, for the next two weeks in September. 
yeah, um, we're going to do the um, Halloween pillow. Yes. Okay. Right here with you on the iron. Yeah. Yeah. I just, it's just not my thing. So, okay. So then remember on this one, how we wanted to be right along the bottom of the little pot. So it turned out right along the little bottom, bottom of the little pot. All right. So now we need to do the flanges. So the flanges are going to be the bigger pieces. And we're going to start again with the side panels. So I've gotten that far with classes. We're, we're, I've got them kind of planned. So, all right. So remember that I did my flanges all in one piece. So these are the 45 inch widths, but they're wide enough. Okay. So they're long enough for what Halloween pillow? It is the um, Kimberbell one. That's the size. Um, it's called um, Home is Where the Haunt is. So we're going to do that one. Okay. It's really cute. I'll bring it, I'll bring it home next week. I didn't have, I didn't get everything home with me this weekend because I had to teach all day on Saturday and I had a bunch of stuff to bring home. So I didn't get all, bring all the pillows home. So remember these were the width of the fabric. Okay. My borders. Okay. These are the flanges. Um, so when you cut these, like I'm going to trim these down to size, you need to trim one short one and one long one off of each size because you can't do two short ones off of one and two long ones because they're not long enough, okay? Because these are going to be longer pieces. And let's see, the um, flanges are supposed to be 18 and a half and 22 and a half. So I'm going to do an 18 and a half inch and a 22 and a half inch off of one width of the fabric. So that makes sense. So I'm going to, so make sure you don't trim both of the same ones off the same one. Otherwise it, you're going to be short of your flange. Okay. So let's see how we did here. So we're going to do these side panels first. Get my, where'd my tape measure go? I have a hard time hanging on to my tape measure. Did it go on the floor again? Probably. I spend most of my life looking for the tape measure. Oh, here it is. Tape measure and my scissors. All right, so we need to measure here. Let's see how we, so these were supposed to be 18 and a half. So let's see if it actually is. So we're gonna measure from edge to edge and see I'm right at 18, about 18 and a quarter. Okay. So at least I'm consistently a quarter of an inch short. So yeah, 18 and a quarter. So we're gonna cut ours 18 and a quarter. Okay, yeah, 18 and a quarter, I think will be good. All right, so I'm going to cut two. Okay, so I'm not going to cut both 18 and a quarter inch pieces off of one of these flanges. I am, yes, I did show, Cindy, I did show how to quilt these borders um, in the last video, the one from last week. So we, we quilted these last week. Okay, so yes. So remember, we're going to cut one long and one short flange off of each one of these, not two long ones off one and two short ones off one. Okay. Because otherwise you won't have enough. So I'm going to cut my two. I'm going to cut one 18 and a quarter. We decided, right? Better measure again. 18 and a quarter. Yep. So we're going to cut one 18 and a quarter inch piece off of each one of these. 18 and a quarter. I need to trim off the salvage edge. I had a little bit of a salvage edge on here first, so. Okay, 18 and a quarter. If I keep saying it, I'll remember what size it has to be. 18 and a quarter. And remember, one off of each one. So there's 18 and a quarter off that one. I'm going to put my other border over here so I don't get them mixed up. Take the salvage off. Oh, and then this one needs to be 18 and a quarter also. 18 and a quarter. There we go. Okay. All right. Now I've got my two longer ones waiting to be trimmed. 
next. So here's my 18 and a quarter inch borders. The reason I don't do that, Nancy, is because if you just sew these on and cut them off, you may have one end that's 18 and a half and one that's 18 and a quarter, and so your pillow won't be square. So the, you, what you want to do is measure, like in the center, make several measurements, and then um, make sure that these are the right length. Okay, so that you want them, you want them to be the same length on both sides so your pillow stays square. Otherwise, your pillow will get crooked. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to put these on the sides. We're going to start off and make sure I pin that nice little junction there so it's nice and flat. If you're sure that your pillow is very square, you can cut them off. And just sew them on and cut them off. But if you, if like in my case, it was just a teeny tiny little bit of variation. And that's also how you put borders on a quilt. Measure in the center. I usually measure kind of in the center and then off towards the outside edges a little bit, you know. And then I um, cut them the same because that way everything stays square. Otherwise, you get ripply, ripply quilts. Same thing will happen with your pillow. Okay, so we're going to pin this on. I'm doing the sides first. And this is nice because we don't have a bunch of little junctions to have to pin through. So we can just pin the border on. All right, and then we'll flip it over and do the other side. Okay. And what I did is I kind of end for ended them so that the, the, you know, you see I've got a little, I got, I got the little seam here where, where they join together. I, I kind of end for ended them. I don't think you have to. There's not really any right or wrong end of these. Would you do the same thing for the panel? Oh, with the panel. Yes, because you want to, you, I mean, normally you have to square your panel up first. So do the best you can with squaring up your panel. Um, sometimes panels are really hard to square up. But then, yeah, the same thing with borders. You want to measure um, before you, you know, put your borders on so that the borders are the same size when you're putting them on. Okay, so then we're going to ease this in a little bit. I learned this from my, all my quilter friends. I've, I'm not really a quilter, but my, my friends have all taught me how to do things properly, you know. I mean, they want me to... Be, know how to put borders on and everything. And I used to put them on by just, you know, putting them on and whacking them off. Well, but that it, it my, I, I'm usually pretty good. I mean, I'm fairly good sewer. So everything kind of measured correctly, but I think I was just lucky, you know, because I, I do sew pretty straight. All right, so let's get this one done. I'm gonna do our full quarter inch seam. And I'm gonna tie this off on the end here. Let's see if we can get over these carefully. Yep, I think so. That's where that little junction is. So I want to make sure those don't flip over on me. It's my favorite part is putting the flanges on. They turn out so cool. I'm gonna have to pull this pin though. They turn out so neat. Now this, this pillow, I, I did two of these, and so this one, my flanges are slightly different color. They're a little darker blue. I think most of my other fabric was the same, but I didn't have, and like my, my cake panel is more brown on this one. The other one was a little more taupey colored because I had a kit, and this one was my from my scraps. <laughs> I was sewing, I had to make a second kit out of what I had left plus some scraps, so... It's kind of my pulled together one. And I did the same thing with the, with the Halloween pillow because I just cut out the second Halloween pillow because I've already done that one. And um, I had to cut out another one and I didn't have enough polka dots, black polka dots. So I did go out and get um, some black polka dot fabric for that. So let's get those out, a couple of those out of the way and turn it over and do the other side. So we're getting almost done, guys. This is so much fun. I love putting these together. They actually go together pretty quickly. 
but I wanted to show you how I did the borders, you know, cutting them and doing them, you know, the size. So, um, but see, if I had just cut them at the 18 and a half or 16 and a half or whatever they were, see, mine would have been too long. So when they give you those measurements, I think they're considering that people may have their pillow when they sew it together will be just slightly smaller and it's okay. But I know I was a little worried about people when we did the event because everything was cut exact. <laughs> I was a little worried and I had a couple people that they were struggling to get their pillow put together and have the borders be long enough because, you know, it was, it, it's not, sewing straight is not actually the easiest thing in the world to do. And a lot of people have struggled with sewing straight lines and stuff. And, um, so it was, we had a couple people that had a little trouble getting their borders fixed, but I think they finally got it once they got their full quarter inches. So if you do the full quarter inch seam, it really helps because then you've got plenty extra. Um, do we have the, the Halloween pillow is another one of like this one that you have to order online, Nancy. So you have to order it from directly from, you can use our affiliate link. And I will, uh, when I advertise that, I will, um, put the affiliate link back up on the group for you to click on it. So you can go right from the group. Okay. I just haven't advertised it yet. I'm going to do that probably um this weekend since i have a couple extra days off i'll i'm going to work on some of those things so okay so there's our there's our borders so i'm going to go and i'm going to press these open give me a second these will be easier because there's not as much bulk on these to press open Hopefully, I don't burn myself. Okay, got one done. Get this one done. Okay. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. All right. So there's our first flanges. Um, the affiliate link, what it is, um, Dobsy is is um, is these these designs are only on the Kimberbell website, so we can't have CDs in our store. So what our affiliate link does is gives us like a little stipend when we send you to their website to buy this. Okay. So that's what the affiliate link is. We do not have fabric. We don't sell fabric, but I got my fabric kit for this one and for the, the Halloween one from my girlfriend's quilt shop out in Logan, Utah. It's, um, it's the gal that owns Kimberbell. It's her sister that owns um, my girlfriend's quilt shop. So that's a good place to get it. So I, I do like, I do like to get kits from them because they do a really good job on the kits. Okay. So now we got to do the same thing. Get our last border here. We're about ready to put our last flange on and I'm going to measure this and it's supposed to be, what did it say here? It's supposed to be the 22 and a half inch one. I don't think it's that big though. It's about 22. So I remember when I got done with this, that mine ended up being about 22 inches square. Yep, 22. So let's see what it is down here. So this one. So yeah, I'll get all that stuff um, advertised hopefully this weekend because I've got the pillow done. I've had it done for a while, but I just have to decide how I'm going to do it. And I just need to put the classes up on the, on the group, okay? And those will be for August and into September. All right, so 22. Is that what I, we decided? What do they say? Measure twice, cut once. I always measure three times and then cut once. So it looks like 22 is going to do the job. And I figured, because that's about what my last one turned out, 22. 
All right, so I'm going to cut my last two flanges at 22 inches each. All right, let's see here. 22 inches. So you'll have just a little chunk left at the end. Because mine were the, you know, I think I'm just a little crooked on this end though. Let me see. I'm not the best cutter in the world, so it's pretty straight. So 22. You see, I'm about half inch small, which in this case, you know, if your borders were cut, probably isn't a bad thing, but it's just a hair small. You can always take it off, but you can't add it very easy. So 22, this one's 22. All right, so I got two 22 inch flanges. All right, so I'm gonna put these on the top and the bottom. So we're almost done. And I got the back, so the backing, you cut 22 and a half. We'll see, obviously mine is only 22. So I'm going to be able to, <laughs> I had, I had uh, a fat quarter. Um, that I was trying to get my part of my, you know, part of my backing because I was doing this out of scraps and I had a fat quarter of this red fabric. I was trying not to have to order any more fabric. And uh, I got it out, but there's a, there's a, um, have you done the table? Yes, I've done two of the table toppers, Cindy. I can show this to you at the end of the class. I have a couple of them right behind me and I'll show them to you. I have January's and February's done. And yes, with the clear blue tiles, I like them really well. They worked out great. Okay, so get, get this end. I got one end. I'm going to do the second end. And I'll make sure that my little, little uh, seams are open down here. Okay. Then we're going to give them a little, I, and I just kind of ease it in the center. So that it fits nice and evenly in there. So you want to do both ends and then you kind of ease the center. Everything just eases right in. So yeah, the we're gonna do um so Kimberbell Club for Shield Sewing Center will be a class through Shield Sewing Center that I will be teaching with Lynn. And that is gonna start in January, and that will be the Kimberbell Cuties. The table toppers. So that's what we're going to do with that. So you can sign up and take that through the store. So we're going to do them online. We'll do them online and also in the store. We'll probably have an in-store version and we'll also be online at the same time. So um, you can do it either way. If you're ways away, like I know a lot of you are from all different, different states and stuff, you can come join us at Shield Sewing Center for the Kimberbell Cuties next year. So Instead of doing the little projects that we have always done for Kimberbell Club, we're going to do the little table toppers instead. thought that'd be fun. Something different. So I'm going to get the other end here. Get my little seam allowance opened up here. Didn't do a very good job ironing, did I? Oh, well. I think we'll still be okay. Where are we located? We are located in Iowa City, Iowa. But we're going to be, there'll be an, it'll be live online as well as I'll have people in the store too. So we'll all be together and no matter where you are, you can come join us. But it will not, I will not be advertising that until probably November. It's when I have a few more of them done. So I've been working on the table toppers kind of as I had time. And they are really cute. And we're going to do them differently. They're actually sewing patterns. They were one of their original sewing patterns. And, and it scared me because they're discontinuing all their sewing patterns, except the, the table toppers. That's the only one that they didn't discontinue. So, um, but they have a, they have a uh, embroidery design CD that goes with it. So, all right, so let's get these sewn on here. Do you mean it will be done on Zoom? Yes. This, that one will be done on Zoom. That's a paid class. So all the paid classes are done on Zoom. 
and all my classes that are free are done on Facebook and YouTube. So yes, it'll be on Zoom. And so we'll be live in the store with people and then the, the rest of the people will be on Zoom. So we'll have everybody be able to see, kind of see each other and converse and meet new people. And I thought it'd be kind of fun. We've, we've done it a couple times and it works really great to be online and in the store at the same time. So I thought we'd give some, give it a whirl. We've got like projectors in the store so I can project the Zoom class up for the people that are there. And I can still sit just like I am right now. Um, sewing and the people can that are there in the store can see me sewing as well and the people on zoom will be seeing the same thing so i think it'll work great and then people can you know meet new people and and it'll be kind of an all-day class like those will be um like on we're not sure what day yet but it'll be like an all-day class like from 10 to 4 10 to 5 because you know we want to basically make the whole thing and they're pieced so those are actually pieced, like quilt tops, you know. So, because um, they originally are just a sewing pattern. So it'll be fun. So that's going to be through Shield Sewing Center. So yes, we're going to do the cuties this next year. And we're going to do, on, on so Along with Jan, we'll do the um, mug rugs. So to all the classes are free. And if you don't have the CD, you can just buy the mug rug CD. We have them on our website, shieldsewingcenter.com. And you can do, all you have to do is get the CD to do the projects. Okay. All right. Let's see how we're doing. So we're getting going across here. Now on the second one here. Then we're going to put the back on. We're almost done. This is going to be so cute. I don't have a pillow form to put it in there for you tonight. I forgot to I forgot to bring one home. I, we have some at the store, and they're up on the website too. But I forgot to bring the pillow form home. I was going to buy another one and bring it home, and I forgot that too. I had too many other things to think about this weekend, I guess. And when I get there tomorrow, I have to get all the stuff turned back to Kimberbell because they want it back on Monday, and I'm not there on Monday. So I always have to get everything done on Tuesday morning, otherwise they start harassing me on the phone. <laughs> they like to have everything back in a certain amount of time. All right, so then we're gonna tie off down here. All right, so let's get all these pins out of here. And then we'll, I'm gonna press this one and then we're gonna put the back on. Now I have to measure my back because this should be 22 inches square with any luck at all. And I'm going to have to cut my backs off because they're 22 and a half. So I'll have to trim them off, which is going to be really good for me because I have a salvage edge on the bottom of one of them. So give me a second here. I'm going to try to get rid of some of these pins so I won't stab myself with them. I've been sticking them in my wool mat over here and I'll probably stab myself. Okay. There we go. I'm going to go press those open. We're almost there. So here's the top and the bottom. Can't probably can't see too well, but I'll get it. I'll get, well, you can kind of watch it as we're sewing. So, all right, let me go get these pressed open and then we'll do the back. One last seam. Figured it'd take me about an hour and a half to put this together. So, you know, you got to do a little cutting and some ironing. So it takes a little bit. All right. Got one done. Let's get the other one. Boy, I didn't do very well on this one. Holy cow. It's going to be flat. It's just not beautiful. Okay. 
just about there. Okay. That looks pretty good. What do you think, guys? Isn't that pretty? I, I like the borders on this one. This one, this one has, um, this one's a little bit darker than the original one. So, okay. So now let's measure this and see. Now I like to put my opening horizontal, um, but you can put it vertical. I think in the picture, let's see how we put it back on. It's an envelope back and I already pre-hemmed it. So they put, they did do it um, horizontal. So yeah, I usually put, well, you can put them vertical, horizontal. I think I'm going to, so do I usually put mine up and down, I think. So I always put them, the, oh yeah, I put mine vertically. I always put that. I'm um, saying so either way, it doesn't matter. So, but I need to measure mine because I think I'm going to have to cut them off. So let's see how we're doing here. So mine are going to go this way. Get my piece of paper again. Was it, yeah, because they put theirs horizontally this way and I usually put mine this way. So, so I'm going to measure, make sure I measure this direction. To see how these go and i bet you i'm a right at 22. yep so i need to cut about mine off about half an inch that's what i had to do and i was kind of hoping for that because like i said i got a i got a salvage edge on the bottom of one of mine because i was cutting out of a fat quarter and you know 22 and a half you know a fat quarter is just barely 22 and a half inches long so these are 22. And then if I measure this way, let's see if it's 22 this way. So we must, I think we did pretty well. Hot dang, look at there. We did pretty well. It's 22 inches square. <laughs> okay. So let me go cut my uh, backing. So I did do, um, I did do my back and I pre-hemmed. So like on one of the long sides of each piece. You want to, you know, turn back your quarter of an inch and another quarter of an inch and then and then um, stitch it down. So um, and they put their pillow this way. OK, but I'm going to do mine up and down. It doesn't matter it, whichever way you like. OK. All right. So let me go trim these off. So see, I have a selvage on one of these. So see, now I can cut the half inch off of the bottom and then <laughs> then it will be um, I will get that white in the seam with any luck at all. So we'll see how we do here. So I'm going to cut these to 22 instead of 22 and a half for the length. Since they're a little bit, whoops, I'm going to set these over here. Got to clear off a little space because these are pretty big. All right. So we need 22 for my backs. which is great because that cuts off almost all of that selvage and then I will be able to sew it into the seam. So we should not see it, hopefully. 22. It's going to be pretty close on the one end, but we'll be okay, I think. I was trying to use what I had at home and not have to buy a bunch of fabric. So I do have a fair amount of stash now with the uh, Kimberbell fabric. So, all right, so 22, let's get the other one cut off. Twenty-two. So I cut off about half an inch off of each one. Okay, I must have had uh, some yardage for one of them, and then the other one was a fat quarter. <laughs> okay, so I'll see. I've got a little bit of selvage left, but you know, I think I'll be able to sew it in. Oh, I don't know. You know, I think I've always just done mine vertical. I don't know why I've always done them that way. They do them horizontal, and I like I've always done mine vertical, so. That's the way I'm going to do this one. So it doesn't matter. Either way works. Okay. So when you put these on, then remember, this is going to be an envelope back. We're going to put these right sides together. And then we're going to put the, the um, hemmed edge on the inside. 
we're going to we're going to um, line up our raw edges. Okay, so I'm going to go up here to the corner, line up my raw edge. Yeah, I don't. I just I've always done them that way, I guess. And it always seems like I do stuff backwards because I'm left-handed, and I think it's just be, maybe it's because I'm left-handed. I don't know, but I've always done mine that way. But you can put yours the other way if you want. Okay, so I'm going to go down here, and then we're going to line this one up, get this corner lined up. Make sure you get your little seam allowance turned down. And I'm going to pin right where that little, you know, where the little junction is. Okay, now we're going to pin along here. Oh, we're getting so close now, guys. I just love it when we get these done. They're so cute when they're done. Wish I would have remembered to bring my pillow form home. I'm sorry. You'll just have to see what it looks like before the pillow form's in it. And some people I know wanted to make this a pillow into a wall hanging. And so, like what I'm doing now, you would just you could just put a back on it, and you could just put a back on it and stitch in the ditch. Like you do on the quilts. What was the Halloween pillow that you mentioned? Oh, the pillow Halloween pillow is we're gonna do um home. What's it called? Home is where the haunt is. It's another one of these square ones, like this one. And it came out before this one did. So we're gonna do that one in August and September. Okay, so I'm gonna pin this side together and we'll do the other side. But yeah, so we're going to do that. And it's another one of these square ones like this one. And these were, now this one I don't think was, but the, but home, um, home sweet, see, what was it called? Home sweet haunted home. It was a, one of their original little wall hanging quilt sewing designs. And so they made it into an embroidery design and made it into a pillow. So in, in all I would do if, if I wanted to make this into a wall hanging is I would just um, I would just put a back on it like now and, and then I would just stitch in the ditch and then put a binding on it. So instead of putting the pillow back on, but I'm going to make this a pillow. All right, so there's that side. So we're going to turn this around and do the same thing on the other side. Make sure you put your hemmed edge on the inside, raw edges together. Let's get this side done. And oops, I'm trying to make sure I get those little seams opened up there. Do this end. Ooh, looks it looks like it's fitting. I must have trimmed okay. <laughs> I always kind of panic when I when I trim off these backs. That did I get it right? Okay. Get this one done. And then, oops. So we're going to, but yeah, it doesn't matter where the opening is, you know, it's just whatever you like to do. I think almost all of mine, I've done them up right, you know, vertically. I do those with the bench buddies too. But yeah, the Halloween pillow is really cute. And that one, like I said, that one's going to be in August, the last two weeks of August. And the and we're going to skip Labor Day weekend. And then the, the next two weeks after the Labor Day in September. So we'll do that. So then it's done before um, Halloween. You have it done plenty of time before Halloween. So we'll do that. And that'll probably be similar to this one. We'll probably do about, I'll do some videos. Um, for some of the blocks now there's a few more blocks in that one i think it has like um well it technically has 12 blocks in it but two of them are repeated so it's like 11 different blocks so i'll do some videos for those we'll do two weeks worth of blocks and then um, we'll do the flanges and the borders and then we will do the assembly and that one has the halloween pillow does have um a few um embellishments on it too nothing real big but goes together pretty quick 
and it was really fun. It was a really, really cute one. Now you do have to have a pretty good size hoop if you're quilting in the hoop because one of the blocks has to be done in a nine and a half by nine and a half, just so you know. So if you have a smaller machine, um, you'll have to kind of, there's another method to do that one. Okay, so now we got it all pinned. Now this one, you know, normally where those little junctions are, where they overlap, I usually go over it like three times. Well, this one we don't have to because that's where the flange is. So we don't have to do that this time. So I'm just going to sew around it with a quarter inch seam. And then when we turn it, we have to put, um, we have to do a um, stitch in the ditch to make the flange. Okay, so we're just going to go around this one. Oops, second here. I've got a tip in my flipper on my machine here. I don't have my embroider unit. I have my embroider unit on. So the two scoops, you know, I'd like to do it, but I just, I haven't got it all worked out yet. So that one may not be till next summer. We may do it next summer though. I thought that'd be a fun summery, springy, early, late springs project. So I don't, we probably next year. They have so many things coming out and they have this new fall one coming out too, which I think would be really pretty to do, but it's like, I can't get everything done. <laughs> so, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll work on some other stuff too. All right. What's this? Uh, yeah, Nancy, could you actually just text that or like message that to me through Facebook so I won't forget? Because it's hard for me sometimes to find the comments. So if you could, if you could send that to me by messenger, then I'll remember to do it. I'll do that later tonight because I can just send you the link, the affiliate link. Yes, yeah, so this is going to be the last Monday night class for a while. So I wanted to do this pillow and the only way I could work it in is do it on Monday, but it doesn't give me a day off. So it is kind of nice to have my Mondays off because that's the day I do a lot of errands and stuff. So I have to make sure I get home in time <laughs> to teach. So um, tonight I, I got home about 4.30 or quarter five. So, all right. So we're getting down to where that selvage is. I hope my quarter inch works out that I can get the selvage in the seam. So you won't see it, I hope. I think we're going to be just there. So, woohoo. Look at there. Worked out. Yeah, I, my Mondays are kind of the day that all the errands get done, you know, and I like having a week off, a day off during the week, because then you can, you know, make appointments and stuff you can't make on the weekend. So I've always had, I've had, I've always had a day off during the week. I've worked in retail for a really long time and I've always had, it's very rare that I've, I haven't had to work a weekend. I mean, it's, you know, I've probably worked almost every Saturday for the last 30 years. So I like having, I used to have Wednesdays off. Years ago, I had Wednesdays and then I moved to Mondays. And I've kind of had Mondays off for a long time. So I've had Sunday and Monday off. All right, so I'm still doing my full quarter inch seam. All right, so we're down. We're getting around this thing. We're going to get this done, guys. All right. So I'm going to go slowly over these because I don't want those little those little seams to flip over on me. There we go. Doing pretty well. This is a big pillow. Wow. <laughs> I remember when I went around, when I did the first one, was, I was trying to think, I think I actually did this pillow. Well, I did the, the. there's also a um, St. Patty's Day one. That's really cute. Um, and it's called Lucky Us. And I did that one first, because I think that's the one that I got the kit first of. So I did that one first. And then I had to go do um, the Home Sweet Home one. What is it called? Home, no Place Like Home. That was the, the event one that we did. So I had to stop and do that one. So I did that. So I've done almost all these square ones. And I think there's a Christmas one coming out. But I haven't 
I think it's a cowboy theme. I think because it was one of their original, um, one of their original little wall hangings that they did years ago, and so it was a sewing pattern, and they made it into a pillow. Okay. Oh my gosh, I made it around. Look at there. Okay, so we're gonna tie this off. It is nice to have two days off in a row. Yes, I like that. Okay. So now we are going to you go get my pin cushion here and get rid of all these pins. I have a magnetic pin cushion, so I just pick them all up. Okay. Get all the pins out of here. Is there a couple here yet? There's another one. Now I need to go over and press this because this needs to be pressed nicely on the on the edge. So um oh did they say it's gonna come out in August? I thought that's when they said August or early September, or so. But that's the one that I think it's a cowboy theme, but I, I don't remember what the name of it was. Okay, so now I need to get these turned. Okay, and these are going to have these nice, we want these nice corners. So I'm going to do grandma's trick. I'm going to take my first finger. I'm going to slide it into the corner. I'm going to pull the seam allowance back and push it forward. Okay, and I'm going to hold the corner. And you notice I did not trim the corners. Don't trim your corners because they will... You will go through them. <laughs> Ask Jan how she knows. So I'm going to go ahead and make the corner again. I pulled the seam allowance down. And I'm going to push it over. Oh, does my girlfriend's quilt shop have the, have them all already on there? Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm going to make that one. So, all right. So I got those two. Then we're going to turn these. And then I got to go press this before I can finish, finish it, okay? So I got to press one more time before we can do the finishing. And I want to show you a little trick with the, so I got the little seam there, okay? I've got, I want to show you a little trick with the, uh, when you go to stitch in the ditch. Because there's a, there's one thing that I do with that that's different than what they say. Otherwise, it broke when I was trying to get my pillows in. Okay, so I'm going to pull this down, push this in, and hold my corner and push this out. My grandma, one of my grandma's little tricks. Okay. So then we're going to use our turning tool, our Floriani turning tool, and finish up those corners. Make sure they're nice and pointy. So they're all beautiful. And you don't decide I didn't take anything out of them. All right. Get this on there. Right there. Yeah, I knew it would take us a little longer tonight because this takes a little while to do. All right, so I'm going to go press one last time, and then we're going to do the final. Now, when I press these, what works good for me is to kind of finger press it. Oh, we you show you the tool? Yeah, this is the Floriani um, Precision Point Turner, and this is up on the Shield Sewing Center website. This is the most awesome tool ever, and it has a little kind of a little rounded end so that the end does not go through your points, Okay. But when I, before I turn this, I like to kind of finger press this down along the edges like this. I kind of pull it back and, and press it down so that when I go to press this, then I have this really nice crease along the edge, okay? So I'm just kind of pulling this back and finger pressing along the edge. If I got some, got some hairs, we'll have to trim. Okay, like this, get it started. I'm going to go down this way. This helps you when you get to the ironing board. It goes much faster. You just kind of press this down first. And I'm pressing like the seam allowance towards the, the back. I'm going to do all four sides. That really helps a lot. When I get up there, then it makes it nice and flat. I'm also going to put some pins in this when we get ready to sew the flange because I want it to stay nice and flat. Did I get this side? can't remember. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay. So I'll be right back. I'm going to go do a little bit more trimming. Or a little more ironing. I'm sorry. Make it nice and flat. And it's easier to iron from the front. So you can see if it's nice and flat or not. Ugh. 
I have a hard time with this new iron. It's I'm faster than it. The little feet don't go in fast enough. When I'm ironing, I'm usually in a hurry, you know. All right, got one one side here. I'll turn it and do the second side. By finger pressing, it really helps. Just, whoops. So it is important to press here because if you don't, it just never turns out pretty on the on the edges. Okay, so you really have to press on the edges before you before you do the flange part. You want it to be beautiful. All right. I figured you've all seen me iron before, so you didn't need to sit and sit there and watch me iron. You, I could talk to you though. Just about around here. One more side. Sorry about the phone, guys. Did you get it? She always calls in the middle of my classes. I don't know why. <laughs> this is one of my friends. <laughs> she does. I think she thinks I never teach. <laughs> She teach, she's a teacher too, so she teaches all the time. Okay, so I'm all the way around. So the next trick that I do is I like to pin my flanges so that when we go to get ready to, to, to do the stitching in the ditch, that this is like attached and it's not gonna scoot on me, okay? So I usually pin my flange down all the way around. So we're just gonna pin this down. Keep it nice and flat. Get this in there, get this one. This one's gonna be so pretty. I like the, I like the blue on this one. It's just a little bit, a little bit lighter colored. The other one was a little more navy. This one's a little bit more royal. Didn't do a very good job on this one. Let me see if I can get this to lay flatter for me. It's being kind of, this one's being kind of cantankerous. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to pin this all the way around. So anytime I do flanges, I do this. And, and you know, the flanges, that we've done some flanges on some of the little bench buddies too. The little ones are a little easier. These are pretty big, pretty big flanges. So, all right, so I'm just going to go all the way around. And then I'll show you one other thing that I want to do to make sure that I'm not going to have problems with it flipping on me. There's, a, We're going to make sure there's a pin in a certain spot on the back here. All right. So now when you do, you have to pick your color for your, we're going to stitch in the ditch. And you kind of have to pick your color. And... I'm going to go with the red, I think, since the, the smaller border. We're going to, we're going to sew, stitch in the ditch right along this, the, between the blue and the red. And I think I'm going to go with red because I'm more likely to hit the red than I am the blue. So we're going to, we're, I think we're going to go with red. You can do monofilament if you're worried about it showing. That's another option. Yeah, Cindy. Good night, Cindy. Yeah, she said she has to get up at 4.30, but she's an hour ahead of us. So she's at, uh, it's only, you know, quarter to nine here. <laughs> and it's quarter to 10 there. She's out east. Eastern time zone. Okay. So the one thing I want to look at is where that seam is on the back here, where the opening is right here. Okay. So make sure you got a pin in that because... It likes to flip over on you. 
So I'm just going to make sure that there's a pin in there so that I do, it doesn't flip over on me when I go to stitch in the ditch, okay? I want that to stay open. Are you using quilting thread? Um, I am going to use cotton thread, yes, but I'm going to show you another trick. I'm going to do a triple stitch. So again, here's the other side over here where that opening is right here, and I don't want that to open up on me. So I'm going to put a pin in there and pin it shut so that it doesn't flip over when I'm doing the stitch in the ditch. Okay. All right, so I'm going to switch my thread to red. And hopefully I have enough to get all the way around. If I don't, we'll stop and you'll you'll see the slightly unfinished project. Because <laughs> I, I think I may have to uh, wind a bobbin. And also the red matches the back. So then, you know, it doesn't show on the back. If, if you want to do the blue, the blue would be fine on the back also. So um, the navy would show on the back then. So it's just up to you. But I think I'm going to do the red here. And this is uh, Pima cotton, just like I used for the rust putting it together. But what we're going to do is we're going to use a we're going to do a um, we're going to do a triple stitch instead of a single stitch. So it just tells you to stitch in the ditch around there. And the problem is, if you just stitch in the ditch, it's going to break open. That's what happens to me is that when I was putting my pillows in, I was always breaking the seams open. I want to see where that is. It's right about here. So we're going to kind of start there. Okay. I'm going to put my needle into the center needle position. I want to move over to my number one tab, which is my utility stitches. And I'm going to use 105, which is my um, triple stitch or my, it's actually the stretch stitch. Okay. So what I did is I lengthened it out a little bit to 3.0. And then you notice that the width is blacked out on my machine. I can't change the width, the, the needle placement. I have to use the left, right shift. And I moved it to 3.5. And what that is, is center needle position. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna use my center needle position so I know where I'm going, okay? All right. So I'm going to kind of start where that one little spot is. So I pinned it right there. Make sure it's flat underneath here. And I'm going to stitch in the ditch. So I like to use my J foot. You can use a stitch in the ditch foot if you want. The reason I use a J foot is I can, I, I kind of guide by that little notch that's in the center of my foot. And remember, this is going to go back and forth. Okay, now I have saved this in my machine. I really should go grab my glasses. Give me a second. I'm just going to grab my glasses off my desk here. It's kind of matchy, so it's a little hard <laughs> to see to see where I'm at. Okay, there we go. So it's, it goes back and forth, but the thing is, if you use this triple stitch, it's going to hold this. And when you go to put your pillow in it, it is not going to break open. Because my problem is I was always breaking the stitches open. Okay. So now I'm going to go into the corner. This is my other trick. You go into the corner, come over and hit the number, the, the triple stitch again. And now you know when you start around the corner here, it's going to go forward. And it's not going to go backwards into your blue. Okay. If you, when you get to the corners, if you just hit the button again, it just makes the stitch start over. And I know it's going to go forward and not backwards. But I really like the triple stitch. I, I kind of, one day I was like, well, why don't I just use a triple stitch? Because then it stays um, together and it doesn't break open. Okay, so we're just about down the second side. I'm trying to sew fast so we get done. And I hope I don't run out of thread, but we'll see. I might run out of thread. It's like I need to. And I'm sewing like in the ditch, but I'm sewing just slightly to the red side so that it doesn't show on the blue. Okay. So there's my corner. Okay. So I'm going to go around. I'm going to turn it around the corner and I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to hit 
the button again. And now it's, I know it's going to go forward out of the corner. Okay. That's my trick because I want to make sure it goes forward out of the corner, not backwards. And the same thing with the decorative stitches. You can do the same thing with decorative stitches. You know what then when you go around the corner, that's going to go forward. If you start it over again, like you were starting from the beginning. Okay, so let's see. We're getting close to this little, there's this other little thing right here. So does that work with this? Yes. Um, and it works with the decorative stitches. There's actually another button that's specially for this. It's a start at the beginning button. Um, but it also works by just hitting the button. And so I've always done it like that before we had that other button. So you always want to make sure when you're in the corners, you know, when you go around the corner, you're going forward. When you're just doing a straight stitch, you know for sure that's what it's going to do. But when you're doing this one, it doesn't, you know, necessarily, it may go backwards. Depending on where you end it. So I'm getting around the corner here. Just about down to another corner. We'll do the same thing. I'm going to go into the corner. Okay, like that. I'm going to flip it around. And then I'm going to come back over. I'm going to hit the button again. And you can, I heard it click. And then I'm going to, and then I know it's going to go forward out of the corner. See how it goes forward out of the corner? I've been doing this for a long time, but it's, you know, I don't use a lot of decorative stitches and stuff, but I do use this, this um, triple stitch quite a bit on different things. So give it a try. See if it works for you. So we're playing, we're also playing bobbin chicken, everybody. So we'll see if Jan can get through this without having to change the bobbin. Because I was really close. I was, no, was going to be really close, I know. <laughs> this is going to be so cool. But I am sewing just slightly to the red side. Yeah, I've known, I know it's getting close to 4th of July because, like, everybody and their cousin Fred has has um, fireworks around here. So I just heard popping and banging starting outside. Okay, so there's the corner again. Ooh, guess what? We've got just a little ways to go. I'm going to mark this so I remember where I started because it's so matchy, it's hard to tell. There we go. Gonna go over here, hit the button again, and go forward. Yay! We're almost there. We got a few inches left. I shouldn't say that because then I'll run out of bobbin thread. So I stopped right here, or I started right here, so we're just about there. So I'm doing between the red and the blue border. And then the blue is your flange. Ooh, I'm going to make it. Look at there. Woo, I was sweating on that one. I didn't know if I'd make it or not. I figured it would probably don't have a whole lot of bobbin thread left. Got a little bit. Okay, so let's unpin these. I'm going to, it needs a little bit more pressing. I'll give it another little press, but I think it looks pretty cool. This was really a fun project. I'm so glad I did this, even though it was a Monday. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun doing this. Oops, let's trim that little tail off. What do you think, everybody? It's done. I'll get my, I'll get a pillow form tomorrow when I'm at the store. I have some there. Forgot all about bringing one home. And I have my sample at the store and I'll have a sample here. And I have one to keep. I think I'll keep this one. I kind of like this, the blue on this one better. So the other one is a little more navy and this one was a little bit more royal. So. It's been a really, really fun one to do. It's not a real hard, it wasn't a real hard pillow. And the thing I like about it, so what do you think? Let me hold it, I'll uh, switch the cameras real quick so that I can hold it up. 
a second. And then some did somebody want to see the little um, table toppers? I can show you the table toppers real quick too. Got to get the right camera. There we go. All right. So, so this is a finished project. Yay. Just needs a pillow farm. A little bit more, a little bit more. Uh, and here's the back. A little bit more. I need to iron a little bit. So I can do that. This is really fun. What do you think? I, I, the, the Halloween one's so cute. I didn't, I just, I wanted to bring the Halloween one home for you to see. But then, and so we're going to have 4th of July weekend off. So next, this next weekend, we will be off. So we won't have a class. And then the following two weeks, we'll do this little July pillow and we'll do this little July pillow. So the next two weeks in July. Okay. So these will be the next two. And then somebody wanted to see the little table toppers. So I've got them here. Give me a second. I got to dig a couple boxes down here. They're right next to me. They're in this box. I have all my projects in little boxes here so I can keep track of everything. But here are the Kimberbell Cuties. So this is the book. And then there's a CD that goes with it. So you have to have the CD and the book. And then here's January Pillow with the little snowman. And I did these with the with the clear blue tiles. So here's the January one with the little snowman. And then I quilted it with the clear blue tiles. I think I did the, you can see it better on the back. But I'm going to quilt these differently. I'm going to gonna do the embroidery at the end. So see, I sewed through the whole thing. I quilted first and then I sewed the embroidery. And I like that because then it shows on the back. So I thought that was kind of neat. And then this is the February one. So I got a couple of them done. Here's February one. Did the same thing. Piece the top, quilted it, and then did the embroidery through the back. So then the, the little X and O is on the back too. All right. So those will be Kimberbell Club through Shield Sewing Center. Do you have the pill? I don't have the Halloween pillow. I'm sorry. I will I will get those advertised really soon. But if you go look on the website, the, the Kimberbell website, um, it is um Homes, what is it called? It Home Sweet Haunted Home is what it's called. Isn't it Home Sweet Haunted Home? Home is where the haunt is. Sorry. They have another one that's Home Sweet Haunted Home, and that's the event we're going to do in September. So that'll be an event we're going to do too. And that's, we'll do a couple Halloween things in uh, September, August and September. So, so yeah, the, the pillow, I, I had it here last week, but I didn't bring it back this week because I had all the other stuff for the event. So I <laughs> I didn't, I didn't bring all the pillows home with me. I'm sorry. So anyway, thank you so much for joining me on a Monday evening and doing Sweet Land of Liberty just in time for 4th of July because we're all done and 4th of July is next week. So a week from today is 4th of July. So it's all done for the 4th of July. You can have it, you can have it um, displayed for 4th of July. And... Uh, I just think they turned out great. These, these were so much fun and I just had a ball making it. So I've made two of them now. I Now I have one for me. The other one's at the store and this one's mine. So, so thanks everybody. And I will see you. Remember, we don't have class next Sunday. We're going to have a week off the 4th of July. So everybody enjoy your 4th of July weekend and be safe and uh, enjoy your families and so on. And then I will see you the following week and we'll do the little pillow. So we're going to do the little rectangle pillow first. Okay. So that's what we're going to be doing. Thank you so much and see you soon. Bye.